Hi everyone, Tim Clapham here for HelloLux.com with another X Particles tutorial. And this is a bit of a quick tip. Um, what we're going to talk about today is the XP Volume Emit object. So in this scene, you can see that we've got an emitter and a cube. And on that cube, I've got a display tag just so that we only see the um, edges. If we press play, you can see I've just got this emitter emitting fairly fast and the particles dying off quite quickly. Let's come up to the X particles menu, come down to other objects, and in here we have this object called XP Volume Emit. So we add that to the scene, switch to the object tab. First thing we need to do is just let it know which emitter we want this to work with. So let's grab this emitter, drop it in here, press play, no different. The other important element with the volume emit is to add some volume objects. And what we can do is we can say that when the emitter is inside or outside of this volume, it will emit. So if we grab this cube and drop that in, press play, you can see that now it's not emitting any particles. And this is because of this little icon here. And you can see that at the moment we have the volume and here we have our emitter or object, which is represented by this small circle. So if I grab this em emitter, pull it outside, as soon as it's outside of that volume, it starts to emit. I put it back inside and it stops. And of course, if we come back here and we change this, so inside, now what happens is it will only emit particles inside that volume. Um, you need to make sure you move the emitter. So if we move that emitter, as soon as it's outside, it stops. So you can see that's got all sorts of creative possibilities. Coming back to the XP volume emit, under the object tab, we have this tracking mode. It's currently set to emitter. We can also change that and set that to object. Let's just come up and add in a sphere. I'm just gonna make that a bit smaller. And if we select our XP volume emit and grab this sphere and drop this into the object to track. Now let's rewind and press play. And if we grab this sphere, you can see that when we move that outside, the emitter stops. So now we're using an alternative object to control when the emitter starts and stops. You could use this setup for, for all sorts of things. It could just be a switch that moves up and down, and as it moves in and out of the volume, it could trigger an emitter somewhere else in your scene. It could be an object that drops into a volume of liquid, and once it's inside there, it then starts to dissolve. Um, the, the possibilities are endless. One of the other things that we can, of course, do is to grab our emitter. Instead of using the emitter shape sphere, we can use an object, Let's use this sphere as an example. So now, if we grab this sphere and we put it into the volume, it's the same thing, but of course the emitter itself is the object. And that's just another example of how we might use this. Now I thought it'd be good to show you a practical example of how you might use the XP volume emitter. And the example I'm going to show you was actually shown to me by another 3D artist called Lothar Mai, and he's an XP3 beta tester. Uh, it's a really cool... Um, simple example of how you might use this technique but of course the credit does go to Lothar for this. Here you can see we've got a very simple scene with a sphere and a couple of cubes. I'm just going to select all of these, right click, choose simulation and add in a rigid body tag. On the two tags on the cubes I'm going to um, set them to be off so they become colliders and let's set the sphere to have a bounce of around 90. So it bounces quite high. And now what's going to happen, it's going to drop down, bounce, and then roll off. So how about if we wanted this to be like, um, you know, a ball of sand or a snowball or um, even some kind of plasma ball that's going to kind of emit particles as it hits these surfaces. So what we could do is we can take this cube collider, let's just control drag that to create a duplicate, and I'm just going to get rid of that tag. And let's call this cube emit 01. Let's add a display tag and set this to be lines. And now if we just pull this up, so it just sits above. Of course, to do this setup, we're going to need to add in an XP emitter. I'm going to set that to be object. The object is our sphere. Now let's just press play. You can see now we've got this sphere emitting all of these particles. And what I want it to do is only emit when it's bouncing off of these surfaces. Under the object tab for the emitter, let's set it to emit from polygon area. 
We can also just add in a very small offset of say five, just so that the particles don't emit from exactly on the surface. The reason that I want to do that is because I want to take this sphere and add some collision to that later. Let's just select the emitter again, come to the emission tab. I'm going to set the emission to be say 10,000. And I really want those particles moving slow. So let's set this to with a speed of 10 and a variation of 10. So some of them will be moving you know, between 10 and 20. Some of them won't be moving at all. If we press play now and have a look, you can see we get this kind of trail as our dynamic sphere bounces through the scene. I'm going to come up to the X particles menu, modifiers, motion, and add in some gravity. So now we can see all of those particles fall. Now it'd be great if they collided with these surfaces. So let's select our sphere and cube colliders, right click and choose X particles XP collider. On the two collider tags on the cubes, I am going to increase the friction somewhat so that the particles don't slide quite as much. Let's reduce the bounce to 35, set the friction to be say 25 and let's add a bit of scatter in there as well so they scatter around a little bit as they bounce on those surfaces. On the sphere itself um, I really don't want to have much bounce so I'm going to set that to 5 and I want quite a lot of friction so that any particles that stick hit the surface of this almost stick to it. So let's see what happens now. Okay and there we go and you can see that we are getting our particles colliding off of the collision objects. If we grab this cube emit, control drag to create a duplicate, I'm going to call this O2, and I'm just going to zero these values and then just pull this up like so. If we come up to the X particles menu, choose other objects, XP volume emit. Now, of course, our emitter is the XP emitter. Tracking mode, I'm going to choose object, and the object that I want to track, of course, is my sphere. Now, because we've created these cube emit volumes, and they're just about above where the sphere is going to bounce, we can use those as our volumes that we'd like to emit. So let's just grab these and drop them in. And we need to set them to emit once the emitter is on the inside. Now we should be able to rewind to the beginning and press play. And you can see now that as the ball bounces, this is the only time that it actually emits. So this could be a tire rolling down some stairs and each step it bounces on, it emits some dust. It could be a metal object emitting sparks, all kind of things. If it was that plasma sphere, then we could easily drop this into an XP domain and start creating some fluid dynamics with those particles. Just increased the particle count and dropped in a cache object so that we can just build the cache there and have a look at the result. One of the nice things here is that we have features such as the Cinema 4D Dynamics module playing really nicely with X particles 3. And of course, not the most complex particle system, but we have set that up in a matter of minutes. And I hope that gives you some inspiration for the kind of stuff that you can do using the XP volume emit object. And if you like this tutorial, then head on over to hollowlux.com with plenty more X particles tutorials as well as a whole bunch of Cinema 4D tutorials too. So that's me, Tim Clapham from hellolux.com. Thanks very much.